Are you a musician? Did you upgrade to Catalina and break all of your 32-bit plugins? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to load an older version of macOS onto one of these. If that sounds interesting, stick around. Before we start, there are a few things that we need to talk about. The first is you need to go and read Apple's user policy and decide for yourself how comfortable you are with this process. For me, everything that I'm using, the codes that I'm using, are described on Apple's websites and I'm only using this on a temporary nature in order to regain access to some of those plugins to try and figure out what my settings were and to render old stems. If you're gonna be using it in a different way, you wanna look at the Apple user policy and see if that works for your circumstances. Number two, there are plenty of other ways for you to go about getting access to your 32-bit plugins. One of the simplest things that you can do is you can use Apple's recovery mode to go and install the OS that shipped with your computer. This abides by all of their user policies, is not very controversial, is not very difficult, but does not work if you've upgraded to Catalina and are dependent on Time Machine. One of the things that Catalina did is it changed the extension of your Time Machine backups, and that makes it very difficult, if not impossible, for you to use that older version and at the same time regain access to your data that's been backed up by Time Machine. It didn't work for me, but if it does for you, that's probably the best way to go about it. Finally, you need to think about the authorization manager for the DAW that you're using. For me, I use Reaper, and all I need to do is to be able to run Reaper in demo mode on the external hard drive in order to render the stems and to see the settings that I use in those plugins. Otherwise, I'm using a fully authorized version, paid version of Reaper on my current macOS Catalina. And again, that doesn't contravene any of these user agreements. So make sure that your DAW can run in a separate instance for your purposes. So what we're going to attempt to do is to create a bootable version of macOS Mojave on an external drive so that you can run it in parallel with your current OS. The only tools that you're gonna need are two external drives. I'm gonna be using two flash drives just to show you that it's possible, but ideally you'd like to have one flash drive and the other one being either an external hard drive or a solid state drive for speed. The other thing that you're gonna need is a lot of patience. I'm gonna break this process down into five steps. In the first step, I'm gonna show you how to download a copy of macOS Mojave or any other older version of macOS from the App Store. In step two, I'm gonna show you how to correctly format the first external drive, usually the flash drive that you have. In step three, we're gonna create a bootable installer on that flash drive. In step four, we're gonna correctly format the second external hard drive that you have. And in step five, we're gonna use the bootable installer from the first external drive to install macOS Mojave on the second external drive. First thing that we have to do is download an old copy of macOS. Typically in our case, we're gonna be looking at macOS Mojave. Unfortunately, if you go to the Mac App Store, you're not gonna find an older link. Fortunately, Apple does have some secret links to these older versions of macOS. I've put a link below to one of these. If, however, you want a different version of macOS, all you have to do is go online and search for it. So let's go to Google and type in Mac bootable installer. As you can see, the first link from support.apple.com is how to create a bootable installer for Mac OS. If you scroll down here, you have several links to download various versions of Mac OS. Now, in my case, I've already downloaded Mac OS Mojave before. So if I try and connect, Apple will probably give me some trouble there. So let's try and download another older version, Mac OS High Sierra in this case, just to show you the process. Once we click on it, as you can see, it'll try and connect us to the Mac App Store and in the App Store to a link where we can download High Sierra. Once you're here, just click on Get. Now, I'm not gonna download this particular version of High Sierra since I've already downloaded Mojave, but for you, you can click on Download. I'm gonna click on Not Now and proceed with the version of Mojave that I have. So once you've downloaded the installer, you're actually not gonna run it. It's actually just gonna sit in your applications folder for right now. 
So as you can see, if we go to our applications folder, we will have something that says install macOS Mojave or in a different case, macOS High Sierra. We're just gonna leave it there for right now. And that's the completion of step one. In step two, what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and put that installer on an external drive. In our particular case, in order for us to do that, we have to first format that drive appropriately. So I'm gonna use the flash drive that I have. I recommend something that has between eight to 12 or 16 gigabytes. The reason why I don't recommend anything more is that when you put the installer onto it, the way that it does it, it renders the flash drive essentially useless for any other purpose. So use something small if you have it. This is a 128 gig drive. I'm probably not gonna leave that installer on this as it's just a little bit of a waste of space. So plug that in and I'll take you on at the next step. So once your drive is plugged in, it's gonna pop up on your desktop. And essentially when we're gonna to go to go, utilities, and go to our disutility app. Of course, this can be done much faster if you just use Spotlight and search for disutility. And we can see our external drive over here. Now, while we're doing this, make sure you don't touch your Apple SSD or any other drives you might have plugged in. Go to the flash drive or whatever other drive that you are using for the express purpose of installing your bootable installer. Once we're here, we are going to click on erase in order to format the drive. So make sure you don't have any valuable data on this drive right now. If you do, back it up. When you click on erase, we can give it a new name. Let's call this one Mojave Installer. For the format, we want the format to be Mac OS Extended Journaled. And for the scheme, we want to change it to GUID Partition Map. Once you're done, click Erase and it will format your drive. And we're done. It's time for us to actually install the installer onto our external drive. Now, in older versions, you could simply go into your applications folder, double click on it and choose where you want to install it. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. So for us, we have to go to the same page that I showed you earlier with the links to the different versions of Mac OS. So just again, search for uh, Mac bootable installer. And we get instructions on how to use their create install media in terminal. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid when they get into terminal, it's been a long time since people have used a little bit of coding, but this is a pretty straightforward process that shouldn't really have any issues. If you don't know how to go to terminal, you can either open up spotlight using command space, or you can simply go as usual to your finder, go to go, click on utilities and you'll find terminal. Okay, once we're in terminal, Apple has essentially provided us with the code needed in order to install the install media. Now, in our particular case, we're gonna be looking at Mojave and the code is right over here. I'll put the code in the description below, but it's always best to just go to the website and copy the exact code that you need. Once you've copied that code, go back to terminal and paste that code in terminal. Do not run anything at this particular point. The code that's provided is generic. As you can see, it ends with volume slash volumes slash my volume. What we have to do is we have to change my volume to the name of the flash drive that you just created. In our circumstance, it was called Mojave Installer. And so we're gonna change my volume to Mojave Installer. Once we're done, we can click on enter and let it run. It's gonna ask us for our password. 
I'm going to type mine in. And it's going to say, if you wish to continue, type Y and then press return. It's got our name right. It's recognized the correct drive. And so we're happy to just type in Y. Now this is a fairly fast disk, so it's managed to erase it and will hopefully copy things fairly quickly. I remember the first time I did this was on a USB 2.0 drive and it just took forever. Um, as we can see, even with this, it seems to take a long time. I'm just gonna let the process run for now. Finally done. That took almost 15 minutes for it to copy and that's using a flash drive that works on USB 3.0. Like I said, it takes a lot longer if it's on a lower USB protocol. So try and find something that's fast, but at the same time, something that is disposable and you don't need to load any more data on in the future. So we can now quit terminal and eject our drive. And we now have a bootable installer of macOS. Okay, let's go on to the next step. We've completed what we need to do with one of our external hard drives, and now we need to actually start working on the second drive. This is the drive on which your new version of an old version of macOS is going to actually live on. Again, I'm gonna use just a flash drive just to show you that it's possible, but I'd highly recommend for this portion to actually use something bigger. Use a hard drive, use an SSD. Um, if you know how to partition a drive, that's the way to go. Uh, I'm not going to be covering partitioning drives, but I'm going to show you how to format any portion of a drive or an entire flash drive that you might need to use. All right, let's plug it in. All right, our new drive has popped up. As you can see, this is a new version. It's called Lexar now. And we're actually going to proceed with the same formatting steps that I showed you earlier. However, I'm going to take you through it again. And just to make sure that we actually appropriately name it, and we don't mix these up. So this time I'm going to use Spotlight. Let's look for Disk Utility. Click on it. Again, we don't really want to touch our Apple hard drive or any external cards we have. We do, however, want to touch our Lexar drive. Over here, we're once again going to go to Erase. We're now going to give it a different name. Let's call this um, Mojave lives, because this is where Mojave's gonna live for now. Uh, we again wanna make sure it's macOS extended journal, and we wanna change the scheme to GUID partition map. Once you're ready, again, making sure that you've got the right drive, click on Erase. And we are done. Let's eject that for now and recap before we move on to the next step. Okay, so by this point, you should probably have two drives, one of which has the Mac Mojave or any other Mac OS installer uh, on it. And the other is a newly formatted drive on which you're going to load the new Mac OS. Again, this is a drive that I recommend that you use an SSD or a hard drive for. The flash drive will work just fine for you to use the actual installer. In this next step, what we have to do is we actually have to insert both the drives into our computer. So make sure you have two USB drives available and plug both of these in. Okay, so you should now have two drives plugged into your Mac. One of them is the actual bootable installer and the second one Mojave lives is where Mojave is going to live. The first one over here, the installer, is what is traditionally going to be your flash drive. The second one is going to be your hard drive or your SSD. But in my case, again, I'm using a flash drive just to show that it works. The next step is that we have to restart our Mac. Before we restart our Mac, you need to be ready to press the Alt or Option key when it restarts. This key is right next to the command key, which again is right next to the space key. And I'm going to put a little graphic up so that you don't miss this. We're going to go and we're going to press restart. And we're going to put our finger on the alt or option key. 
once the screen goes black, we're going to press that Alt or Option key and we're going to hold it until we get a new screen. Okay, we're ready to restart. So let's go here, click on Restart, press Restart, and as soon as you see a black screen, now press the Option key and hold it down. And as you can see, we have a completely new menu. The icon on the left over here is what used to be, or rather what is our main Mac operating drive. The icon on the right is the bootable installer that we created on the flash drive or external drive number one. We're gonna choose that option. If you can, choose your Wi-Fi network as well. Apple says it does matter. I haven't tried it without doing so, but I'm going to be choosing my Wi-Fi drive as well. You will need the password for your Wi-Fi network, so make sure you have that handy. All right, once you've put in the password, what you want to do is click on the up arrow for your bootable drive. Again, this is the flash drive, the first one that we created that's called Install Mac OS Mojave. Okay, once you reach the screen, we're going to choose Install Mac OS. And press Continue. You're going to get the startup screen for Mac OS Mojave, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to click on Continue to proceed. Please read the user license agreement. And if you're comfy with it, Click on Agree. Now, this is really the critical part. What we want to do, or what this page is asking us, is where do we want to actually install the new copy of Mac OS Mojave? OK, we don't want to install it on our existing drives. If we do that, it will either create an instance where it might erase the data, or it'll create the same sort of issues that we have with Time Machine, where we can install an older version, but we can't actually access our older files. What we do want to do is we want to install it on the second drive that we created. Now, this again should be the drive that's either a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. Um, but in our case, just as a proof of concept, I'm showing you that you can actually do it on a flash drive. Once you're ready, you can click on install. Once you do that, you can follow the normal steps of installation, put in your user ID, put in your Apple iCloud ID. I'm not gonna do it in this particular instance because I don't want too many copies of Mac OS floating around under my own particular name. So I'm gonna exit this and I'm gonna show you what that new copy of Mojave looks like running from an ancient flash drive from the mid 2000s. For your purposes, just click on install and follow the procedure it's pretty basic and is generally just like starting up a new version of your Mac OS when you get a new Apple computer. See you on the other side. I hope that was a painless process. It's a pretty easy setup to just, you know, get started and get your iCloud account in. Um, I didn't think that was super necessary. Trust me, there's nothing technical in that process. So please do have the confidence to proceed with that previous step. Once we're here, as you can see, we have Mojave with that familiar old background. And if you inserted the same Apple iCloud ID, you will have your same login settings. So I'm just gonna put in my password and I will see you once I'm inside the actual operating system. Once you log in, you might get a series of messages that might seem alarming, but aren't really. The first one is just a general alert that your Apple ID and phone number are being used on a new Mac, which is precisely the Mac that we set up. 
you can click OK. This message is simply requiring us to put in a password to access data on our original hard drive. Now, this isn't really a major step. I usually put in the password, but I find it quite difficult to access that data anyway. So I'd recommend putting in your old original computer password at this point, but not really worrying about it too much further. And here we are running a nice clean install of Mac OS Mojave and all of that is running right off of this flash drive. I think that's pretty incredible. Congratulate yourself. You are running macOS Mojave in parallel with your other OS. Before we end, just one quick reminder. When you're in Mojave, or I'm going to do it from Catalina, you need to go and find your startup disk. You can do this by going to your Apple menu and clicking on System Preferences, which is where I am. Once you're in System Preferences, click on Startup Disk, and you'll get an option about which disk you're actually going to use to start up from. In order to change that, click on the lock icon, put in your password, and from here, you can choose whether you're going to boot up the next time you restart your computer into Mojave or into your normal Mac hard drive. Remember to do that before you do your next startup. All right, that's the end of our journey. Hopefully you now have a version of Mac OS running off an external hard drive from where you can get access to your old 32-bit plugins. If you found this video helpful or you know somebody, a musician, someone who's creative or dependent on older apps who might benefit from this video, do consider sharing it with them. Till then, keep on rocking.